Hey gang, thanks for dropping by my YouTube channel. This video is about dealing with aggressive players in low limit online sit and go poker. So I'm sure you've heard all the pros telling you that aggressive play is winning poker. At the same time, you're not really playing those $10,000 buy-in events yourself, are you? You're probably playing five, 10, and 20 bucks sit and goes like I do. In regards to that aggressive behavior, you probably found something out in trying to adapt that style of play in the low limits. It really doesn't fucking work, does it? You know, this aggression will not stand, man. The biggest problem with being aggressive in low limit online sit and go poker is that you keep running into pinheads and idiots all the time. These players just cannot comprehend the concept of folding. Bottom line is there's already a lot of aggressive players at these levels, but they're losers. I'm sure you know the type of guy I'm talking about. Liam and me, we're going to fuck you up. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Stick it away from you and stick it up your ass and pull the fucking trigger till it goes click. Jesus. Eight-year-olds, dude. Sure, now, players like that can make you want to puke, right? But you do have to get a hold of that because you need to be in the proper frame of mind when playing poker. You need a mind game. When you're sitting at tables with these opponents, I mean, it's hard to control some of the blood-boiling anger you might be feeling when you see one of these guys donk up, suck out, or, for God's sakes, even win a tournament. And yes, it happens. This is our concern, dude. When you're in the proper frame of mind, you're going to be able to encourage your opponents to self-implode. And believe me, that's exactly what they're going to be doing most of the time. Isn't that the best satisfaction, though, in watching these idiots self-implode? Of course, sometimes they don't. Like I said, they do donk up. And I hear that all the time. People who've seen my videos before you know they cannot handle the bad beat. The goddamn plane has crashed into the mountain! But seriously, if you're involved in a level with a lot of bad beats going on, whether you're involved with them or not, you're in the right level. You just haven't learned to manage those bad beats yet. Part of the mind game to keep your sanity also requires you to stay away from the chat box. I'm serious about this. Don't engage with them in chat rhetoric. The only outcome that can come from this is that they improve. You don't want them to improve. You want them to continue making bad plays. The reality is you need to stop making plays right into them in terms of bluffing or being involved in large pots when you really don't have to be. So that's going to lead into the tactics against playing against these guys. You need to avoid early and especially marginal confrontations. I'm not talking about folding ace-ace or king-king here. I'm talking about calling raises with your king-jack offsuit just because you're in position. Play passively early on in the tournament, at least until you get in the money. More often than not, you'll be in a spot to trap your opponent for a big chunk of his stack, if not his entire stack. Now again, this goes against what the pros are saying, and I'm telling you here right now, that is fucking bullshit. It does not work in these levels. You have to use so many cuss words. What the fuck are you talking about? Find me a pro that plays in these levels with a winning record. It's not happening. One of your most important tactics at this level is to value your M zone. You need to value your green and yellow stacks to the point where you will be willing to fold down probable winners against maniacs. Now, I guarantee you're not going to be hearing the pros say stuff like that, but it is a winning strategy in these low limits. All right, so we're just going to go look at a few hands here where we've spotted some of these dumbasses. I don't know why he called. What did he have there? Maybe a 10 or a 5. Oh, it came up. Okay, so he had 10. He called my raise with 10-8. Just going to try and set him up for an error. Uh, didn't hit anything. I'm yellow M zone. Well, that's a pretty big bet, so I'm going to leave this alone. Let's try it again. Now we got something. All right, he's getting pushy. Pot 6,000. He bet again. Now it's a shove. 
16,000 there, equal to my stack. Let's see what he does. <laughs> see, that's what you got to do with players. 2,000 in the pot, I have 18 in the stack, time to shove. So, if he's got a queen, I'm dead. But, you know, against a tight player like me, you can't be re-raising like that, on a flop like that. But, they're not paying attention. Again, I'm just waiting for him to make mistakes. Ace, Jack, pretty good hand. I'll do something different. And re-raise him pre-flop. Ah, oh, but that is just a horrible fucking flop for me. Um, I gotta stay away from this. My The other guy over here has got 600 chips. I, I don't have to get involved with a big pot. Look at my M. My M is green. I don't have to get involved in a bluffing war with this guy. That's why I'm backing off. I'm playing passive when I need to, but I will play aggressive when I need to as well. But I'm still in decent shape. He's Jack. I hope that moron goes out. He doesn't. I got a call again. I want to see what this, um, what the short stack does here. Uh, let's wait for a bet and then we'll take it down. 480. Again, I'm pretty much assured the guy's going to be putting money into this pot, so he's doing my job for me. A lot of these guys can't really control themselves too when you repop them with a stronger hand. His aggression factor is just out of control there. All right, let's find. All right, so I have ace king here. I'm still green, and I get a raise from that same player again. Of course, he's pre-flop raising a lot. The flop didn't help. That's tough, and it's a four-way pot. Seriously, I, I can't do anything with this. If it was one of those short stacks, it's reasonable to put them all in on this. But this other guy's coming in, and that's a pretty solid bet for a four-way pot, especially when there's two short stacks in it, so I fold. Surprise, I fold. Against a player like that, even queens and jacks, I would probably call them all in if he does something stupid. I think I'll repop him. Like I said, guys like this cannot handle being re-raised as well as you and I. There we go. He could have a pair. He could have ace-king. He's got a pair. That is a bad play on his part, especially against me and the way I've been playing. Just put himself out of the money. And thank you very much. Wow. See? They're just going to hand it to you when you let them. Hope you got something out of that video, and thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to go to sitandgocertified.com and pick up my free ebook and videos. Ciao. about desert. Wraps are all up. Things seem to have worked out pretty good for the dude and Walter. And it was a pretty good story, don't you think? <laughs>